dragonflies in flight can be very challenging, but if you get it right, it can be so rewarding. It's not the easiest of subjects to photograph. However, patience, perseverance is the key. I did a previous video on dragonflies and damselflies on, on how to photograph them, and that was really about photographing static dragonflies and damselflies, and I'll leave a link to that at the end. What we'll do is we'll look at dragonflies themselves and actually how they fly. It's important that you understand uh, a bit about behavior and how they operate. We'll look at the equipment that I use for photographing dragonflies in fight, flight. We'll look at the settings and I'll cover the techniques and the five steps to success in photographing dragonflies in flight. And I'll give you some top tips along the way. Dragonflies are absolutely incredible fly, flying machines. They're, they're amongst the, the, the strongest flyers in the insect world and they can fly further and higher than other insects. They can reach speeds of up to between 20 and 30 miles an hour, with the average speed being around about 10 miles per hour. They are absolutely spectacular, agile flyers. The dragonfly's flight or the flying skills are due to the incredible constructions of two sets of wings. Dragonfly flight is controlled by the stereotyped stigma, I hope I pronounced that right. These are little wing marks that you'll see in the, the, this, the, this image and they act like weights as a counterbalance as the dragonfly is actually flying and they stabilise the wings in flight. We then have the costa which is the leading edge of the dragonfly's wings and that allows the dragonfly to cut through the air whilst it's actually flying. And the dragonfly flight is powered by muscles at the base of each wing. When we look at the, the, the different groups of dragonflies, they're actually described by their behaviour, and it's important to recognise and understand the characteristics of uh, the name and the behaviour. So for instance, the emperors, uh, they tend to just patrol along the normal routes, one of the largest dragonflies that we have here in the UK. Then we have the chasers, and as the name suggests, they will chase other dragonflies and their own species away. We have darters, as the name suggests, they're always darting about, and darters often perch. Then we have the skimmers. Skimmers tend to fly very low to the ground, so they're skimming, skimming, skimming the ground, and again, they're perchers. And then we have the hawkers. They spend a lot of time on the wing, and they will at times actually hover. No insects fly better than dragonflies. No other animals fly better than dragonflies. And we've only got to look at man's use of flying machines. Uh, we can't match the agility of the dragonfly and their ability to fly. They can fly forwards, they can fly backwards, they can fly sideways, up, down. They can glide and they can hover absolutely amazing insects in flight. Top tip, time of the day. Dragonflies don't normally get on the wing until they've warmed up. Here in the UK during the summer, I would suggest between nine and 10 o'clock in the morning is probably about the first time you're gonna see them on the wing. Ideally, you want a bright overcast day like today that will offer the best light conditions. However, you need to avoid direct sunlight because the sunlight will get, it's just too, too harsh plus the reflections that you'll get, you'll get on the water. Also, avoid very windy days. And I have go by a rule, I call it the Rule 15, which would apply here only in the UK. And what I mean by Rule 15 is, if the winds are greater than 15 miles an hour, or the temperature is less than 15 degrees, then you're going to struggle to see the dragonflies on the wing. So that's what I call the Rule of 15. Winds greater than 15 miles an hour, and temperatures less than 15 degrees. When it comes to the equipment that I would recommend for photographing dragonflies in flight, it's it's pretty minimal really. I shoot with a Canon R5 and a 100 to 500 millimeter um, lens that allows me to, to 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 zoom out and zoom in. And one real tip um, for photographing dragonflies in flight is if you're at the longest focal length, around 500 millimeters, it's very hard to pick up the dragonfly. So what you need to do is zoom out to about 100 200 bring your camera up find the dragonfly and zoom into it and then start taking your pictures and that's all has to happen very quickly because as we know 
dragonflies are very quick. I also have a 70 to 200 lens, which are used for real close up work. Um, both of those lenses or those choices produce quite sharp images. Uh, I always shoot hand holding. I did a previous video on how to photograph, or the, the top five steps to success in photographing dragonflies in flight. And I went through in detail how, all about hand holding whilst photographing birds in flight. It's not really any different to photographing dragonflies, just that the dragonflies are just so much quicker and so much more uh, erratic. Tripods, I wouldn't even bother using a tripod. Um, you just don't have enough time to uh, adjust yourself. You have to be very quick and you have to be your, your hand eye coordination where you see the dragonfly you've got to be quick to get up find the target zoom in it and get your pictures taken when it comes to the, the camera settings for photographing dragonflies uh, in flight you have to get them right you must 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 get your your, your settings right uh, otherwise you're going to miss the opportunity so my settings is i always shoot in manual and auto iso what that allows me to do is i'll set my shutter speed I'll set my aperture and I'll set it to auto ISO. Once I've set the aperture in auto ISO, I completely forget about them. The only thing I then need to concentrate on, which is critical for dragonflies in flight, is the shutter speed. And I can do that with one finger on the, the, the back of my camera. When it comes to autofocus modes, the majority of the time you're going to get the dragonfly against either a clear sky background or a clear water background. Therefore, I would recommend using the nine point group autofocus selection. And what that does is, because you don't have a contrast in background, the focus isn't gonna to jump to something. It should lock onto the dragonfly straight away. I always shoot in servo, uh, uh, continuous autofocus. I set it to the highest frame rate. That means that the higher the frame that you shoot at, the better chance that you're gonna get of getting an image of a dragonfly in flight sharp. My go-to settings, my go-to exposure settings, would be one three thousand two hundredth of a second shutter speed f8 and auto iso and as i said the only thing that i would adjust would be the shutter speed dependent on the light thoughts on setting it to animal detection and eye detection sometimes it can jump it's worthwhile giving it a go i tend to not use that keep it to that nine group against a good clear background and you should be able to lock onto your subject straight away Okay, top tip. Top tip is to set it to your highest frame rate. The higher frame rate um, per second rate, the greater the chances are you're going to get sharp images, as I said. I shoot at 20 frames per second, and the better the light, the higher the shutter speed that, that I'll use. The likelihood is that during the session, unless the conditions are absolutely spot on, you're not, you're not going to get too many chances or opportunities. Therefore, your camera settings must be correct. In this shot here, which is a, a sequence shot of a female emperor dragonfly in flight, uh, it's a series of shots that I've taken. So I've seen the dragonfly, I've focused in on it, and I've panned my shot to get a series of images, and I've then stitched them together. I did a previous video on action shots, uh, which I'll leave a link to underneath. That's why you have to have a high shutter speed because these insects are just so fast. It's not just the camera settings that have to be correct. It's also the settings for your lens. Settings that I will set on my lens are, I'll have autofocus on. I'll have the limiter switch to full. Image stabilization, big debate about image st stabilization. Do you, do you need image stabilization when you're shooting at speeds in excess of 3,200? A lot of people will say, no, you don't. I don't actually think there's a difference. That's my own personal opinion, but I'm not going to debate it here. When it comes to the, the actual image stabilization sets, you've got one, two, and three. I would use one for shooting static objects. Use two for shooting whilst I'm panning. And three is really more of a battery saving um, setting. Or it can also be used if you're photographing something that is erratic. And again, you could use that for shooting dragonflies in flight. But myself personally, I always shoot on two. Top tip, shadows. Having the best camera gear and equipment, 
and the lens doesn't guarantee you that you're going to get the best images or get near to the dragonfly to actually photograph it. Dragonflies can be very skittish and you have to be very aware of your shadow which can actually um, spook them. It's far better when you're starting off to stand back, use a zoom lens and as I said, zoom out to acquire your dragonfly and zoom in and take your shots. Once you've mastered that approach, you can then start to move closer to your subjects to get more frame filling shots. Step one in success to photographing dragonflies, dragonflies in flight is all about observation. Take your time, spend that time watching and observing the dragonflies and try and identify if they have any set patterns. By doing that, that will allow you to actually be able to intercept the dragonfly in its flight and get those images that you're after. Once you're happy with what you've identified as being that dragonfly's path, you then have to pick a position to get into, and then you need to start thinking about the background that you're photographing against. Remember what I said about clear water, clean sky, your auto focus should, should automatically lock onto it very quickly. If you've got a very um, contrasted background or a cluttered background, you'll struggle with getting your auto focus. Take the time to study the dragonfly's behavior and the flight patterns. And step two in the, the steps to success in photographing dragonflies in flight is to think about the background. As with any wildlife image, the background of your, your photograph is just as important as the subject. Get the right background will allow you to get that dragonfly to pop out and um, get a good clean image. And that's all got to do with distance. The further away the background is from your subject, the, 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 the cleaner and the softer the background you're going to get. And that's what you're looking for. Try and avoid unclustered backgrounds because you will struggle with your autofocus. Try to photograph them in flight. Step three in the five steps to success in photographing dragon flights is to do with perches. Dragonflies will often perch and they often have their own favorite perches that they will come back to time and time again. If you can identify them, that gives you a great opportunity to set yourself up. Remember thinking about the background to get in the position as the dragonfly comes in to land onto the perch or it's taken off from the perch to get that shot of the dragonfly in fight, flight. Step four is all about your angle of approach. What I want you to do is have a look at this diagram. Firstly, try to photograph the dragonfly parallel to your camera sensor. So you're looking to get the dragonfly at 90 degrees to the camera sensor. The dragonfly should sit in that plane of focus and you'll get your depth of field correct. Secondly, that way, more of the dragonfly's body stays inside the focus plane. In other words, the, the, the depth of field. Thirdly, the greater the distance between the dragonfly and the background, as I said, will help to give you a good, clean background. Look to identify flight patterns, as I said, and take note of any airspace they tend to hover in. Certain dragonflies, especially the hawkers, like to hover, and they'll often get to a certain space which we'll call an airspace where it will hover. That is one of the best opportunities that you're going to get to photograph a dragonfly in flight when it's hovering. Step success is to do with patience and perseverance. As we've seen, trying to photograph dragonflies in flight is very challenging and at times it can be very frustrating. One of the best skills you have to have as a wildlife photographer, not just with dragonflies, but for any type of wild, uh, wildlife photography, is to have patience and perseverance. As I said, it can get pretty frustrating photographing dragonflies. Just be patient and persevere. Stick with it. And if you follow the five steps to success in photographing dragonflies in flight, I'm sure you will be successful. As Mahatma Gandhi said, 
To lose patience is to lose the battle. Okay, what I want to do now is just leave you with some of my favourite images of dragonflies in flight, and I hope that you enjoy them. Okay, so we've looked at dragonflies in flight. Thank you for watching. Um, as we can see, they are a real challenge. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. I hope that this video on how to photograph a dragonflies in flight has been useful and the five steps of success will allow you to be successful in photographing dragonflies in flight. All I would ask is that if you've liked the video, could you hit the like button? Could I also ask you to Subscribe to my channel, Kevin Hartley Photography. It's completely free, doesn't cost anything. And what that does is it allows me to grow the channel and share my knowledge and my experiences, which, which is what I really like to do with the channel with other people. So until the next time, stay safe, take care, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.